This channel is proudly sponsored by the Demon Ninja Kickstarter, a tabletop RPG of horror and redemption in a dark Japan. Please check out the links in the description and in the pinned comment. Here's a promo to the Kickstarter. and the Red Room Publishing. Please check out the link to their store also in the description and in the comment. For exclusive tabletop RPG products you will find nowhere else. Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring the Nightfell core book. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, featuring this setting for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, where the sun has been murdered and the world has been plunged into almost complete darkness, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the medium. The gift of mediums is also their burden. The bodies of mediums voluntarily become vessels to contain the spirits of the past, which give them skills and knowledge worthy of those beyond the veil of death and a cold and otherworldly presence. When it comes to hit points, you are quite sturdy. This is definitely a useful class for melee duties. You are proficient in the use of light armor and medium armor, as well as all simple weapons, short sword, scimitar, long sword, and great sword. Your saving throws are based on charisma and dexterity. You have skills such as arcana, intimidation, history, sleight of hand. The symbiosis of the mediums with their own ghosts opens the door to the union between the vitality of mortals and the eternity of the dead gaining powers, but often also a kind of catharsis from the afflictions of earthly life or a presence that relieves them of an incurable loneliness. You have the feature of Ghost in Ambush. At first level, with a bonus action, you can summon the ghost that is inside of you and materialize it outside of your body in a special condition that from now on will be defined as into the open. The ghost will hover ominously behind you in a condition known as in ambush, from which it can be sent as a reaction to cling to an enemy who has made a melee attack against you. If the ghost is clinging to a target, the latter cannot recover hit points in any way, and if it's an undead, it would cause it to have disadvantage on its next attack against you. The spirit can also damage the enemy directly, rending it with its spectral claws. You can also employ your own spectral claw attack, and this becomes even more powerful as you level up. You also choose a fighting style later on, from great weapon fighting, two weapon fighting, dueling and archery. Now when it comes to subclasses or archetypes, you have the nature of the ghost feature. By learning about their ghost and discovering how to use their powers, the medium focuses on a particular path, such as the wandering ghost. The ghost reveals its connection to the world invisible to the eye, and its personal torment that keeps it tethered to the world of the living. You obtain spells such as Blink or Freedom of Movement. This is all about hit and run. You obtain various advantages and bonuses when it comes to dash, disengaging and even becoming invisible. Then you have the Valiant Ghost Archetype. This ghost manifests as a solemn fury, strengthening and purifying the body of the medium who has the strength of the ghost in their hands and its courage in their heart. This is all about supporting your allies with bonuses to armor class, saving throws, even healing them, and having your spirit directly assist them in battle. Then you have the Jinx Ghost Archetype. The ghost manifests its propensity for hatred and vengeance, revealing itself as capable of casting powerful curses. You have spells such as Bestow Curse and Contagion. And by the way, when it comes to the Valiant Ghost, you also have spells such as Beacon of Hope and Death Ward. When it comes to the Jinx Ghost, this is all about taking advantage of enemies that have failed their saving throws and attacking them with your ghost. You also hamper their movement. 
and you can even have your ghost immediately cling to another target after the former target has died. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part we are going to talk about the vampire character class, my favorite character class from this setting. Although I like the medium quite a lot as well. When it comes to having this ghost that clings to your enemies, harming them, while hampering or nerfing their own actions. Although I think that the Jinx ghost archetype is a bit too situational, it's definitely for a party where perhaps one or more of the other members can cast spells that force the enemies to make saving throws constantly. And because you can also frighten them with this archetype and you can hamper their speed, it's definitely more suitable for specific targets or objectives rather than general situations. Thank you for watching this part of the review. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. This has been Abraham El Jaguar, a professional game master. If you want me to run a game for you, please check out the pin in the comment below. And remember, master roleplay and you will master the game. Once again, thank you and see you later.